The heavyweight bout we've been waiting for is coming to fruition in the final four. DJ Burns versus Zach Eady. Who you got? You are Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono from Locked On Canes. He's Kenton Gibbs from Locked On Wolfpack. We are Locked On ACC. Thank you so much to the everydayers for making us your first listen and your first watch each and every day. ACC has a team in the Final Four. 6.09 p.m. on Saturday. Purdue against NC State. Kenton Gibbs, we're getting that battle down low. Everyone's talking about it, and for good reason. DJ Burns and Zach Eady on both sides. Burns with NC State. Eady, of course, with Purdue, who's about to become the National Player of the Year for the second straight year. They've been so instrumental to these final four runs. And I look at DJ Burns, who's obviously going to be the underdog in this matchup for, for obvious reasons, but he's raised his level of play in the postseason, comes off that career game with 29 points, 21 of those in the second half against Duke. Uh, this matchup to me, Kenton, is going to be so much fun with Edie having all the tools and then Burns having that girth, but having that quickness and explosiveness. I cannot wait for this one. It's going to be a thriller when they get in that ring and Manel. I'm sorry, wrong sport. Uh, this one here is going to be special. This is a clash of the Titans, the likes of which we have not seen in quite some time. This is quite literally Star Wars, and, and obviously Purdue is the Empire because nobody's actually rooting for them. And if you do root for the Empire of Star Wars, you're a sicko. Seek help, okay? I, mean, I, but I did root for Cobra Kai in, uh, in Karate Kid, but I'm not enough of a sicko to root for the Empire in Star Wars. You were a sweep-the-leg guy, Dono? Absolutely. No mercy. I, I, I understand that Cobra Kai were the betting favorites, and I know you're all about the money line and, and <laughs> whether or not Daniel Son was going to get it done. Or, that's neither here nor there. This battle here is going to be something special because it's so much of basketball, especially professionally, we're told the big man is done. The, bit, the era of the big man, especially a big man that can't step out and hit the three, it's over. It's over. We don't see any more Zach Randolphs. We don't see any more, um, you know, Andre Drummonds. We don't see any more guys who are particularly just paint beasts. They just make it happen in that painted area. We don't see it anymore. We got not one, but two of them in this one a player that went on to win his conferences, most outstanding player in terms of uh, the, the tournament with DJ Burns, and his region's most outstanding player yeah. in DJ Burns. Same thing with Zach Eady, a guy who, again, he's he's a immovable object, but DJ Burns is the irresistible force. What is going to happen in, in that matchup will go a very, very long way in determining what happens in this game because DJ Bur Burns has historically struggled with length. See, uh, NC State against Creighton last year with Kalkbrenner was giving him all types of fits because he's a seven-footer. And, you know, it, you're looking at a seven-footer with more girth that's a little bit bigger than Kalkbrenner. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough going. And when you look at this matchup, I can guarantee you this. If this matchup is swung 10 to 15 points one way or the other, I'm guarantee you that team not only wins, it may be a blowout. Yeah. Well, and, and honestly, um, I, I know that these two players have been so outstanding for their respective teams that everything goes to this. And I love what you said about the big man, right? I mean, these days for what is the past really 15 years or so, we've seen in the NBA the yeah. transition go away from the big man. But we're seeing a reminder in college basketball how important these positions can be. But honestly – I know a lot of people, and I did it to start the show, are going to make this about DJ Burns versus Zach Eady. But uh, the reason why I give, to keep the boxing analogies going, I, I give NC State a puncher's chance or maybe better in this one, and we'll talk about the odds in a minute. Uh, it, it's not just about Burns, but it's about the supporting cast, the defense that NC State's been playing, holding teams to 35% shooting so far uh, in the NCAA tournament, and the guard play. Like, even if, and listen, the odds would say that Edie is probably going to get the better of that matchup with Burns for all the reasons we've talked about, but I think NC State might get the better of Purdue as a team. 
Let me tell you something, okay? Muhammad Ali is one of my favorite boxers of all time. And, and the reason he's many people's favorite boxer. And the reason why I love him so much is the showmanship in, in the poem. So let me read for the, the, the listeners of Locked On ACC a poem that I read or that I created for this matchup, okay? And it is titled Clash of the Titans, all right? This game is going to be great. And it's to the eyes, it'll be pleasing. It'll be all types of folks there from Indiana to North Carolina, all with the Phoenicians. The raising sun is finally going to go down so Modiara can eat. But boy, that Zach Eady, they say he's a big old beast. The funny thing about it is DJ Burns handle is beast, boy. These jo these jokers are no nothing to be fooled around with. This run is of no toy. Cinderella keeps dancing because they got all the shot makers. DJ Horn, Michael O'Connell, Casey Marcel are going to take out the boiler makers. Let me tell you something. This is going to be something special in terms of what NC State does here because I I have under good authority that the, the game plan is going to be make anybody but Zach beat you. Exactly. And, and I'm telling you right now, everybody keeps saying, well, you know, NC State's getting lucky with all these shots that all these teams are missing. And shot quality says that this team should have beat NC State and this team should have beat NC State. Well, ain't it funny that with all that shot quality, there's still something called a scoreboard. And at the end of the game, for about, I don't know, nine games straight now, NC State has had more than the other team. If we force that, if you force Purdue to make anybody else beat you, I don't know if you've seen this or not, but Purdue's offense outside of Edie, they have looked like they are from the Island of Misfit Toys Community College. So yeah. with that being said, if you make, if you force the ball out of Zach's hands, oh boy, oh boy. I don't think that Purdue can get it done, especially because they're getting tight. You can feel all that pressure starting to weigh down on them. And NC State is the guy with nothing to lose. They're, they're Rocky. You know what I mean? At, at the end of the day, we all love Apollo Creed, but you're rooted for Rocky for a reason. Oh. And this team right here, it's their time. It's their time. And again, I said, you know, Dono and I, for those of you who don't know, we did a show last year, Locked On College Football Live. And I was going to pick Oregon in the Pac-12 championship game until they told me what the line was. Oregon was about 10-point favorites in that one. And I said, that line's too big. They're disrespecting Washington too much. Washington goes on to win this game. And it happens. The line in this one is how much, Donald? Well, I want to tease that, Kenton. Oh, I okay. Full, well, we can hold we can Full hold. breakdown. Full breakdown when we come back. Because, like you said, I don't think NC State is getting nearly enough respect. Like I, yeah. When I looked at the lines today on FanDuel, I was obviously expecting the Wolfpack to be underdogs. I wasn't expecting it to be by this much. So you know what you want to do? You want to keep it locked right here. We'll talk about the final four odds. And if NC State can shock the world, and if they do, how much money you're going to make on them shocking the world. So you want to keep it locked right here. Kenton Gibbs from Locked On Wolfpack, Alex Dono from Locked On Canes on this brand new episode of Locked On ACC. And I know you're keeping it locked to LinkedIn Jobs. My friends, if you're a small business owner and you're hiring, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the right place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. That's why LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you so much for making Locked On ACC your first listen and your first watch. Alex Dono from Locked On Canes, Kenton Gibbs from Locked On Wolfpack. So, Kenton, I'm looking, uh, as I do every single day, I've always got the tab open for FanDuel, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at the final four odds. And again, you're going to have 11-seed uh, NC State, 
uh, taking on Purdue, 6.09 p.m. on Saturday, 8.49 p.m. on Saturday. You've got the other side of that with UConn, who are, you know, <laughs> they're doing what UConn's been doing the last couple of years. Uh, they're 11.5-point favorites against four-seed Alabama. But I, I was thinking, because I, I like to guess the spreads, Kenton, before I actually look at it. I was thinking probably plus five and a half, plus six for NC State. They're getting nine and a half points here. Like they're nine and a half point underdogs against Purdue. And I, I almost feel like, and I know, listen, uh, the, the handicappers do what they do, but the money goes certain ways and most of the money's coming in on Purdue. And I just feel like, is nobody learning from what NC State has done in these past four games of the tournament that, yeah, you can make these guys dogs against everybody. Uh, at least I, obviously, you have to you have to be real ballsy if you're going to take like NC State on the money line to win the game outright. I think they can absolutely win this game, but I'm not going to hesitate to click NC State plus nine and a half against that spread. I think they're going to keep this game very close, if not win it outright. You know, like I said, I, I talked about this before with, with Oregon and Washington, and I stand firm on this. There are sometimes the line is so big, a coach doesn't need bulletin board material. He can just take it to the team and say, the country believes that this team is 10 points better than you. 10 points better than you. The, the country believes that this team is just going to whoop the wheels off of you. And I said all year, NC State had can't get right itis. They couldn't string together good offense with good defense all year. All year. They, they, they struggled to do that. And Grayson Boone and I, the, the co-host locked on ACC or uh, locked on Wolfpack, were both talking about the fact I don't think the Wolfpack have peaked yet. I don't think they played their best game. I don't yeah. think they played a game where I'm like, oh, they're not topping that. This is this is prime form. They're and and I, with that being said, I'm gonna tell you this. This spread, nobody believing. They were ranked dead last in terms of everybody's power ranking for the Sweet 16. They were ranked dead last in terms of everybody's power ranking for the Elite Eight. Guess where they're ranked for everybody's power ranks for the, the for the final four? Take a wild guess. Last. Plus, plus two thousand odds to win the championship. The longest odds out of the final four. No, they're second, of course. Obviously, I'm joking. You're right. They were dead last. One more time. <laughs> this team has embraced it, and this is America's team. This is America playing the USSR in hockey back in the 80s. This is that moment where there's the, they're the long shot. They've got no chance. They're going to get dominated. They're going to get devastated. Well, they heard that about Duke. They said, well, you snuck on Duke the last time. They, they'll take care of you this time. They heard that about Marquette. Oh, you ain't played nobody real yet. You just ain't played nobody real. You know, that's the problem. You you beat up on Texas Tech, and we all know the Big 12 is game in the net, so that's how they ended up where they ended up. Yeah. And then you you avoided Kentucky by some stroke of luck because you have a, a horseshoe up your behind instead of Kentucky and John Calipari do not know how to do simple defensive principles. I don't know what to tell you. As much as we love Robert Dillingham, well, not in, not in Raleigh because he uh, miffed us to go to Kentucky, yeah, but right. – uh, you know, as much as everybody loves Robert Dillingham, the boys can't defend basic down screens, basic pick and roll action, basic elevator screens. They get lost and look like deer in the headlights. Sorry to tell you. So, you know, NC State's been hearing this entire run after they beat Louisville. That was pretty much the only game that everybody said, oh, that one makes sense. After that, time after time after time, it was, oh, it's over. Oh, you know, you're not the darlings. Oakland is the darlings of the tournament. Lo and behold, you know. This team keeps fighting. They keep battling. They keep showing up. And Cinderella or Cinderfella ain't gonna stop dancing in this one. The the glass the glass suede slip ons are still rolling here. You know what I mean? It's a it's a hybrid between glass and suede. How that would work out? It's magic. It's Cinderella. Don't worry about that. They're gonna keep dancing. So I'm looking at uh, the odds courtesy of FanDuel, our betting partners here on the Locked On Network. And again, NC State are plus nine and a half, nine and a half point underdogs. Uh, the money line, if you think they're going to win the game outright, you get a good return there at plus 340. Uh, the other game, as mentioned, UConn uh, minus 11 and a half. They're 11 and a half point favorites, minus 720 on the money line to Alabama at plus 500. And then I look at the national championship odds. Uh, not surprising, UConn minus 185 favorites. I will admit I may have put a few dollars on that, even though the odds aren't great. But, you know, UConn does what they do. Uh, then Purdue at plus 190, Alabama at plus 1,300, followed by NC State at plus 2,000. So, Kent and Mr. Locked on Wolfpack, I, I'm curious because we, we talked about the uh, we talked about the matchup of the big fellows, the clash of the Titans, okay? 
Uh, and again, I believe NC State can win this game based on what the supporting cast does. That's where I think they have the big advantage against Purdue in this one. So who else has to step up outside of DJ Burns if NC State's going to get to that final game? Like I've talked about many a times, um, Mo Diara is, again, That's he's playing out of his mind. He's playing the type of basketball that if Wolfpack fans knew this was possible when he was in the portal, we would have been shouting and jumping for joy when this young man signed up uh, to come play for us out of Missouri. I think that he's he has to be him and Ben Middlebrooks have to be special. But I think the the biggest thing, the shot makers got to hit their shots The you know, they don't. I think that the, the thing that has pushed this NC State team to where they are, everybody is not being the star. They're starring in their roles. If Jaden Taylor continues to star in his role of 3 and D, Casey Morsell continues to star in his role of 3 and D, Michael O'Connell continues to star in his role of facilitator, of huge shot maker. You know, Michael O'Connell, he don't want to hit no shot till it's all on the line. He's don't don't give me that shot with no pressure. You know, but he's he's been phenomenal throughout this run. Um, and DJ Horn, of course, he's the guy that stirs the drink. He's the lead guard. He's the one that, that does the score. He's the one that when the ball is in his hands, he's prime time TV. You can't look away. So I know that I just named basically the entire team, but that's what you're going to yeah. need. You're going to need a full team effort of guys showing up, locked in, concerted effort on defense, and everybody hitting their shots, and you will end up in another game where, because most people believe UConn is going to, you know, put the beats on Alabama, and I agree. Uh, you're going to end up in another game where you're going to be 10-point underdogs, 15-point underdog, whatever the case may be. 15 may be excessive, but 10-point underdogs or so. I, I can see that. I mean, against UConn, I, I can see probably 12, 13-point dogs maybe. And I'll tell you what, if they 12, 13, go ahead and hang the banner in Raleigh now. Go ahead and get those boys <laughs> the rings now. While, <laughs> while they talk about Hurley and not want to get overconfident and all that, there is no way to stop your team from seeing press clippings when you are plus 13 favorites in the national championship, yeah. when people are looking at you and saying, man, did they have an easy trip or was, or are they just that much better than everybody else? It's so easy to take your eye off the ball for just that split moment. And in that split moment, we're going to hear that one shining moment from Luther Van Drossen, and he's going to be telling us how NC State got it done at the end of this tournament. Well, of course not Luther, because he's you know he's with the ancestors now. Rest in peace to that beautiful soul and voice. But we're going to hear one shining moment, and we're going to see the Wolfpack hanging yet another banner in Raleigh. I want to go from hardwood to the gridiron and talk a little bit about uh, the slate of football coaches in the ACC. Who's got the most pressure this coming season? And I think there's a couple of coaches who have high expectations, but not as much pressure. We're going to break it down. Kenton Gibbs from Locked On Wolfpack. I'm Alex Dono from Locked On Canes on this brand new episode of Locked On ACC. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time of your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Alex Dono and Kenton Gibbs with you here on Locked On ACC, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Kenton, heading into this 2024 football season, um, now, obviously, I'm I'm wearing this U on my hat, and uh, I'll yeah. talk about Mario Cristobal in a second. But uh, am I wrong to say that even though like Clemson ended up having a good year, better better than we thought based on the first half of the season, uh, I think Dabo Sweeney has the most pressure of any ACC coach heading into the 2024 season. And part of that is being a national championship winner. And, you know what feels like long ago now in the Trevor Lawrence era, and prior to that. Uh, he set the bar so high for himself, and Dabo, he takes this risk in the fact that Clemson doesn't bring in transfers. They don't embrace yeah. NIL. Like he's not embrace. And I know a lot of Clemson fans rally around him for that because they appreciate like the old school spirit of college football. But 
he's doing things so differently from the modern college football coach. And Clemson has been getting decent results, but not up to their standards from four, five, six years ago. I think Dabo Sweeney has a lot of pressure heading into this year. Oh, absolutely. I remember a very long time ago, there was a practice that uh, disallowed Bear Bryant to get some of the best players to his college. We don't need to talk about what that policy was, but it was a policy. And you know what he realized? I need to get my team, I need to get the wheels whooped off them by a bunch of players, by a school who does allow that type of player on their team, and then I get everybody to change. The difference between Bear Bryant in that moment and Dabo Sweeney in this one is that Dabo Sweeney refuses to see the error of his ways. He right. refused. He's just like, I'm going to stand 10 toes down in what I do and how I do it and how we do it, which is fine. And you can do that, but you need to win. You need to produce at that level in order to get it done. And I know Clemson was a double digit win team last year. That's so it's not like they're in the absolute trenches, but like you said, the, the expectations have been reset. There would be report card days where me and my sister bring home our report cards. Okay. I get a 3.2. She get a 3.0. And my mom would say to me, you think that you've done just enough to keep me quiet, huh? Well, no, you need to do better. And she would tell my sister, great job. Way to go. Way to do, you know, way to knock that thing out the park. And this is not to say that my sister's on the touch. She's the only one of us with a master's degree. Because once I was done with undergrad, I said, y'all gonna have to pay me to ever go back to school again. I was the same know. way. And and by the way, my sister has a PhD. So I and, that, the, and that's what I'm saying. Feeling. And that's what I'm saying. So, so this ain't to say she's unintelligent, but it was. But when I talked to my mom about, it, I said it's not fair. My grades are better than hers. What's the problem? She said the expectations for you are different from her because I know you're capable of different. Mm. Now that Clemson fans and now that the nation has seen that Clemson is capable of different, they need to make that. They need to match that up. Now, are there almost every other team in the ACC would they take Clemson's last year happily? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But that. That's they're not Clemson. They're not Clemson. That's just the fact of the matter. You have reset your expectations to that level to where if you don't reach that level, it's not good enough. Yeah, and and for for different reasons, uh, I I definitely there there's pressure on Mario Cristobal at Miami this coming season. Now, yeah. um, I, I've had this conversation a little bit with Spencer McLaughlin from Locked On College Football, and basically for contractual reasons. I think Miami would have to be really bad for Mario Cristobal to get fired this coming season. And obviously, I don't want to see that happen. I don't think Miami's going to be really bad. But, I mean, we're talking about if, if they're not bull eligible, then that's probably what it would take because he's entering year three of a 10-year contract. Three years ago, signed a 10-year, $80 million deal. So I, I, I just don't think it's cost-effective to make a decision like that unless it's a really disastrous year. But the reason why I think there is pressure, even though it would take a lot for him to lose his job, is because the way Miami's been recruiting, uh, top seven class in 2023, just had a, a top five class in 2024. And when you bring in a player like Cam Ward with the expectations he brings from Washington State to play quarterback, uh, the way Miami's been upgrading their talent, like I, I, I've been covering Miami for a long time. I haven't seen recruiting like this in well over a decade. So expectations yeah. come as you build the depth and you build the roster. So uh, and also, if I look at Miami's schedule, Kenton, um, it's, not it's a more the world. right. It's a more favorable schedule than they had yeah. last year. Like they they don't have Clemson or NC State on the football schedule. They had both of those last year. Obviously, Florida State is always a very tough game for Miami or for anybody. But Miami does at least get that at home. They had to play them on the road uh, last season. I think Louisville on the road is probably their other toughest ACC game outside of Florida State. There's some other sneaky opponents on there, but. You know, they, they went a disappointing seven and six, including the bowl game last year, um, you know, probably need to be more in the nine win range for people to be satisfied with it. But uh, and for that reason, I think there's a lot of pressure on Cristobal this coming year because year three with the type of players he's bringing in, you've got to start getting results, which have not been there on the field the last couple of years. There's a running meme about the Miami cycle. The Miami cycle is recruit great players become the off-season champs, lose games that you shouldn't lose, make excuses, look forward to next year because you're recruiting well again, yep. get great recruits, um, become the off-season champ. And that's just, it goes on and on and on. Miami fans are tired of it. That is one of the most proud, I, I say all the time that at most schools, if you win eight games a year, you will get a lifetime contract. They will name the stadium after you, all that good stuff, right? Miami is not one of those schools. 
It's only about 15 of them where it's like winning eight games a year. Nobody's going to be happy with that. Miami is one of those schools. So like you said, he needs to get up to that nine win, nine win range because, again, you're recruiting great players. That's great. We love to see it. You're recruiting. You know, Bain is an animal. I absolutely love watching him play. He is a violent defensive lineman with a motor that just won't quit. It just will not quit. And, and of course, you watch him and you watch some of those other pieces on that defensive line. You hear about some of the other pieces that are coming in and recruiting, and you say to yourself, like I've always said about Miami, on paper, they are primed and ready for this to be their year, on paper. But there's a funny thing that happens when they lace those cleats up, when they throw those shoulder pads on, when they put those helmets on and they get down on, on that line, when they kick off for the first time in the season, all of a sudden things just get a little wonky. Oh, Tyler uh, TVD can't read zone defenses for whatever reason. Oh, De'Aaron King just is very inaccurate in some of these games on his deep balls, except in Raleigh where he turns into prime Mike Vick. <laughs> oh, the, the, the offensive line looks a little shaky. Oh, the, you know, this position group that was supposed to be good has seen a lot of injuries. At some point in time, the excuses run out, and you're left with the dust settling on what is your final record? What did you actually produce? So I agree with a with a tradition as proud and as loud and as unabashed as Miami. Okay, there is no way under God's green earth you can not make a bowl game. And even if they got to pay out, hey, listen, we're going to give you $60 million and never be around here again, partner. They'll do it. They'll do it because, you know, it's needed. A couple of other coaches, uh, I'm, I, in my opinion, have a lot of pressure this coming season. I, I've got to put a spotlight on Pat Narduzzi at Pitt because that that was that was a dreadful season last year, and and there was uh, after you know they got blown out by Notre Dame last year, and then you know some of his players weren't. I they, who knows they may have worked it out behind the scenes, but he threw some he threw his players under the bus because he basically blamed it on the roster and not on himself. And I know a lot of players were vocally upset about that on social media. I don't know if they've aired those grievances and put it behind them, but. Coming off a three and nine year, I mean Narduzzi, he had he's had you know success there in in recent years, but last year you can't have that two years in a row, Kenton. Like they've got to bounce back and have a winning record this year. I love me some Narduzzi, big Narduzzi guy over here. Okay, huge Narduzzi guy. With that being said, you're absolutely right. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. You're absolutely right. You cannot. You just won an ACC championship. The last coastal team to ever win an ACC championship because now we're divisionless. You're going to go down in history as the last one. And it's so ironic. I think that game at Wake Forest for them was one where you look back at it, you're like, man, the irony is landing on thick. They won that game against Wake Forest in terms of the ACC championship a couple years ago because of the Kenny Pickett fake slide. They lose the game to Wake Forest last year because their quarterback started the slide too early from the first down. Yeah. And they end up having to punt the ball back to Wake Forest, who then goes down and gets the game winning drive. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that team was extremely snake bitten last year, but Narduzzi needs to have them back on track. There's only so much goodwill that that conference championship can carry. You cannot have multiple back-to-back three and nine years. You cannot have multiple years of, of non-bowl eligibility. And I'm going to say this last thing, and I'm going to pass it back to you. Narduzzi, you're blaming the roster. That's a good point. You know, your GM must be – wait a minute. <laughs> We're in college football. You put the roster together. It's like that meme. We're all looking for who committed this crime. Narduzzi, we're all looking for why your roster was devoid of talent. We're all looking around for the reason. <clears throat> so, long story short, you're absolutely right. You know, it, Pitt is another one of those schools. I wouldn't say they have that Miami type tradition, but they are also a proud fan base that will not yeah. deal with, oh, you won us one championship four years ago. Therefore, you get a perennial lifetime contract to go three and nine. Absolutely not. Now, there's a couple coaches I'm not putting in the high pressure category, even though they have high expectations. Like, you know, for example, Mike Norvell, because I, I think starting the year 13-0, and winning the ACC championship, uh, he, I think he just bought himself a lot of equity last year. And even though, obviously, oh, Florida State, odds-on favorites to win the ACC this year, high expectations, you know, I, I, I don't put pressure on Norvell for obvious reasons. Uh, and then another one, like Jeff Brom, who probably overachieved in Louisville last year, 
Uh, it's still a honeymoon there, Kenton, and and why obviously Louisville fans would want to keep building on that success from making to the ACC championship game. Uh, I think again he bought himself a lot of equity in his first year with his alma mater. I might add. So so even though high expectations for both of them, I don't put a lot of pressure. Uh, I do put pressure, and you may agree with this on Mac Brown this coming oh, year. Yeah. yeah. I, I think this this is a, a put up or shut up year for Mac, especially with the way his teams have done in November and the way they've done yeah. in both season. Absolutely. And you talk about those struggles in November, and I just so happen to be wearing my Wolfpack shirt today. I if only we would have talked in pre-production about the fact that we'd be discussing Mac Brown's hot seat. I personally <laughs> hope that Mac Brown stays there forever. He's done a fine job in recruiting. He's a good man, Savannah. He's just in a bad situation. No, but in all seriousness. You know, the November fall aparts are one thing, but you also cannot lose to your rival three times straight and have them demoralize you in this last one. It didn't look like your team got off the bus in Raleigh in this in this uh, most recent installment of, of NZ State UNC. You need, you need, you need to have a year where you bounce back because UNC spends, I believe, the third or fourth most in the conference on recruiting. They spend a ton of money. They're not afraid to break the bank to get wins. But the crucial part of that is the last three words, to get wins. And those wins aren't just against App State. That App State win doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Oh, you stopped the mighty Chase Bryce. Yeesh. Those wins are not against Western Carolina. Nobody cares if you beat the Catamounts. I'm sorry to tell you, with all due respect. You know, much love <laughs> them boys out there in Western Carolina, you know. But – Nobody cares. You are bought here to get this team back to an ACC championship level. You're bought here to get this team to national relevance and potential prominence in that regard. And it just seems like I've said this before, and people think I say it with like anger or hate for UNC. That program needs to get tougher, top to bottom, top to bottom. It starts with Mac and, and permeates through the program. There needs to be a toughness. There needs to be a bowing of your neck. There needs to be a pride to wear that dirty foot logo on the side of your helmet or the, the kind of wonky NC, whichever one. I still think a dirty foot on your helmet is crazy, but they need to have more pride about themselves. Uh, that's well said. And guys, tune in tomorrow. We'll continue to talk Final Four, the NC State magical run, and what it's going to take to get by Purdue. We'll talk some more football as well. He's Kenton Gibbs from Locked On Wolfpack. I am Alex Dono from Locked On Canes. We will talk to you again next time on another episode of Locked On ACC right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.